All right, we, so we finished kind of, we talked about the Beach Roby yesterday, which is a pilot controllable pitch, right? Yeah. Where it's, you set the pitch either based on electric motor, or a little crank or something, and it just stays at that pitch. It's basically a fixed pitch prop for, for all purposes until the pilot decides to make it a different angle. And then it just stays a fixed, fist, fixed pitch prop again. Well, moving beyond that, so we have the pilot has no control with the, the compress aromatic, and then the pilot has some control, like with the Beach Roby. And then we'll move on to the two position. Two position Hamilton standard. Propeller. <clears throat> it is often called a controllable prop, so often called a controllable. Counterweighted, counterweighted, or two position. Two, so any one of these things, but I would call it all of it. It's the Hamilton standard two position controllable counterweighted propeller. There you go. So unlike the other ones, it's designed so that the pilot can control one of two angles. You two choices. So pilot, pilot can select, can select one of two blade angles, one of two blade angles in flight. Well, kind of like a two-speed transmission. Of course, now I have to explain what a transmission is. <laughs> yeah, because. Oh man, no, no, no. Uh, you think of something else? Yeah, gosh, any more? I have three cars, and only one of them has a regular transmission. CVT. Yeah, There's no transmission, a CVT, and then a regular one. All the yeah. Huh? CVTs are garbage. Yep. Yeah. Apparently they are. They are. They suck. I hate They're that. cool if they would just work in their optimal setting, but it freaks people out. Oh. Uh, yeah. Mine broke. My wife took it down to L.A. and I and I came down with the van. And that's why we get nothing done. And she calls because it it's kind of won't shift. I'm like, well, it doesn't shift. It's you know, CVT. Yeah, well, it's not doing that. So I get down to L.A. and I seemed fine. But anyway, for whatever reason, she had to stay and I left and I took the kids home. I took her Nissan home. Oh, my gosh, it wouldn't shift. I mean, it was just like stuck in like whatever fifth gear is going down I-5. You know, do you know how flat I-5 isn't? Man, I thought it was flat, but man, you just get a little tiny hill to go over something and it, whoa, I'm doing 40 miles an hour, but it's passing. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> what was it? Well, no, transmission broke. Yeah, I took it to Nissan dealer. I'm like, yeah, it's broke. <laughs> we'll put a new one in. So it allows a low pitch. or low blade angle for takeoff and climb. Is that a high blade angle or a low blade angle? High blade angle for climb. Low, low, I even uh, wrote low. low. Okay, low thank you. Angle. <laughs> high angle for cruise. Yep. High pitch for higher cruise speed. So basically, you, know, you select your low blade angle, pilot takes off, finish the climb, reach over, push in the clutch, pull it back, 
Yep. Prop re-engages and off you go. Cool. There's no clutch. <laughs> Cool if there was. <clears throat> yeah, you gotta double clutch it. Double clutch it. All right, there we go. Hamilton Standard two position propeller. Okay, first thing we should notice that it has counterweights, counterweights on it. So centrifugal twisting force wants these counterweights to. This way. Yeah. Higher blade angle. Higher blade angle. And they are in fact there right now. You can see the little slot right there. Mm -hmm. Which is really, it's, it's funny if you, and you'll get a chance to mess with this. These aren't that heavy. And you think, wow, these are so heavy, but it's just the way they're placed in there, the way the mass is that this does the work. So centrifugal twisting force will make these fly out this way. Right, because they don't want to go like this. They're going to, you know, that. And, and so they are right now on the high blade angle. And so centrifugal twisting force is going to do that. Engine oil pressure inside of a piston and a dome here is going to force them to come this way and go into a low blade angle. So I was just messing with the one out there. Yeah. And that whole will extend out the flight? It does because, uh, no, it, it, I'll show you. That's what this is. All right. Um, I have to remember that these drawings are jacked up. And I don't remember where they are jacked up, so it'll come to me as I'm going go, oh, yeah, that's where it's jacked up. All right. Um, I think I would go backwards. Let me see. We can start here. Oil pressure moves the cylinder forward and decreases blade angle. All right, those are my slides. Okay. Oil pressure is released and the centrifugal force on the counterweights increases blade angle. All right, so they're talking about oil pressure is being released and the centrifugal force in the counter. Ah, let's go to this one. So how does it control? Inside the cockpit, you have a valve that will either line up the prop to receive engine oil pressure or drain off oil pressure. So right now it is selected, so engine oil pressure, and it's just take it off the oil pressure gallery, you got 50, 60, 70 pounds, whatever you got, line it up, it's gonna come through here, go to propeller, the oil pressure is gonna go into the dome, it is going to cause it to go into a... Yeah, so it's gonna go into high blade angle. So that's oil pressure, and it just stays there. Oil pressure just stays on, stays high blade angle. And then when I don't want it to be in, in that way, then I'll rotate the selector. We'll line up to drain the propeller, so the propeller's going to come through here, open up to the drain, and the counterweights, centrifugal twisting force, are going to cause it to go into a feather. towards towards feather, which is high blade angle. Don't say feather. Yes, you're now getting that habit. I keep hearing that. It goes to feather. Okay, feather is a position where the blade is perfectly in line with the wind. So you can say higher blade angle, you can say it goes towards feather, but don't say it feathers it because it does not feather it. So if you lose oil pressure, you're going to go to high blade angle. Yes. Would not be good on takeoff. But if you lose oil pressure on takeoff, you Yeah, you had other problems anyway. <laughs> but if you lose oil pressure in flight, you'll get to where you're going faster. So that's a good news. Okay. So this says oil pressure is released and the centrifugal twisting force on the counterweights increases blade angle. So increasing, okay, so they do have the counterweights going this way, it's increasing blade angle. This is, this is where I think this is screwed up. Um, all right, so here's where you're gonna be looking. I got rid of some of the slides. I kind of wish I wouldn't have now. So oil pressure is gonna come through here through this thing, it's going to fill up in this area, pushing the dome outwards. When the dome pushes outwards, it then moves the counterweights. And I think that was the problem. I think these arrows represent oil coming through, not the movement of this piece right here. 
And this is a little complicated because the, the way it's actually installed on the airplane is kind of weird. You take this cap off and then the screw that actually goes onto the crankshaft is down in this area here. And then you see screwed all on right there. And then you put the cap on and this, there's a seal right here that keeps the oil. So the oil pressure comes through here. It's gonna move this forward. Oil pressure moves the cylinder forward. I guess they're saying the right thing. They're just drawing it weird. It's gonna move it forward. As it moves it forward, it is going to go towards, oops, go to a lower, go, uh, it is going to go to oil lower pressure, blade lower blade angle. Well, that's not working out so much, is it? Oil pressure moves the cylinder forward. I told you these drawings are kind of jacked you know, up. As it extends out, it's going to hold the um, weights in. Yeah, so that kind yeah, of way should go, go flat. It's going to go to here. So as it pulls them in. It's yeah. going to go to here. So it's going to go to there. Yeah. yeah. Yep, okay. So there we go. Follow? Thank God, because I didn't for a minute. So, all right, lower blade angle. Yes. Okay, we want to go to a high blade angle. Oil pressure. See, it is in. That's the problem. It is in the the low. So we want to go to high, we align up that valve, oil is going to drain off out of here. This piston is going to move backwards, moving it backwards, causing it to go to a high, high blade angle. So high blade angle, it's going to come over to this position. Yes. Now when it is in this position, which is the This is low blade angle. It is in the low blade angle position now. It's moving towards. It's moving towards. That's why these drawings are like, uh. Okay, so it moves towards. Shifting gears. It is currently in the, it is currently in the low blade angle position right now. Yes? Okay, it's currently in. It's not moving. Let's just say we've got a set here. All right. Notice that this right here is exposed as opposed to this one. All that is in here now. See that? You don't have much exposed right there. And I tell you that to tell you that when you shut down this particular propeller, it is backwards than every other propeller out there. You want to shut it down in the high blade angle position so that you are covering this up from the elements. Yep. Interesting. Well, it's also kind of backwards from all those single engine props anyway in the fact that you lose oil pressure goes high. Totally backwards. Yeah. Yep, that's why I keep that running my, my mind. Okay, backwards, 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 and so. Uh, funny story, I built a very rare, rare engine. It was a Continental 240, extremely rare. And it went on a Cessna 190, 190 I forget, it's like 190 or 195, depends on which engine it has. It's a very old timey cantilever Cessna airplane. They're, they're pretty cool, except I hate them now because of this guy. Uh, it's a, a seven cylinder radial engine. And it normally they're 220s, this one was 240 horse. And what had happened, the guy said he was flying it along and he heard this bang and he goes, I swear I saw the prop stop and go. And it cracked the nose case and it cracked part of the power case section. And so he brought it to our shop and the boss like, yeah, we can have this fixed. And so um, I took it apart, he sent it out, he had it weld repaired and uh, brought it back and we put it together. And I don't, it's just, I think the metal was just too fatigued at that point, probably shouldn't have done it. But I had built the engine and we trucked it down to Madeira and uh, the guy, mechanic down there, put it up on, on the engine. And the, the owner was such a whiny little guy. He was just whined about everything. It was just driving me nuts. And so we sent it down to his mechanic, and his mechanic installed it and also was insistent that his mechanic, or he dealt with the overhaul of the prop governor. Now, when I built this engine, it had a whole stack of 
rings on it, like piston rings. Um, it was like a stator rotor, stator rotor. I forget how it went exactly, but it was like that long. And they went around the whole shaft, and that's how you, the oil transferred from the governor in through these rings and out the prop and, and uh, prop shaft and ran the prop. And, you know, it was the first time I'd experienced this. We did a lot of 220s, but not the 240. And so, you know, I was talking to somebody who kind of helped me through it. And I'm like, man, what do you do with these rings? He's like, you, they're irreplaceable, Kevin. You just take them apart and you just, you know, carefully put them aside. You carefully put them back on. As long as they're not broken, they're reusable. Um, you know, these are antique engines. So, you know, I did all this and finished it, sent the engine out. You know, they put it up, you know, and I'm always very, you know, nervous about that kind of work. It's like, oh, man, I hope it works. I hope it works. It's, you know, so much labor goes into these engines. You know, and I get this call, you know, well, your engine's crap. What happened? What happened? We started it up and it slung oil all over the entire airplane. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess something is screwed up in the nose area. I mean, I, just, I, I don't know what to, know what to tell you. Well, you're a damn engine, you know, and this and that. So, all right. So, you know, I get in my truck. I drive all the way to Madeira with all the tools to pull the engine. I guess I'm going to yank the engine off, bring it back home, do this all over again. Boss is pissed. Everybody's pissed. You know, I get there. And this is a pretty airplane. And the guy, I mean, he said it was just covered in oil, just completely you know, it took him days to get it clean. And I don't remember why exactly. I, I don't remember what I did anymore, but I did something. And I was like, well, everything looks good. You know, I don't see any problems with anything, you know. And, and I, I don't know why I convinced him to start up the airplane, but I did. And I did it again. Oh. <laughs> Gallants. I mean, it was just, I kind of thought it was funny because he was such a whiny guy. I mean, it just covered this freaking airplane. And I mean, it was, it was gallons of the prop. Well, what happened is the, um, his mechanic didn't install this equipment up here right on the propeller. The seal wasn't here. So all the oil came through here, went through here, leaked right out of there, went right down the propeller blades, all the way down the propeller blades. You know, these are big props. Same size as the ground adjustable. And for that length of it, just sprayed the aircraft with oil. <laughs> So, yeah, I called back the shop, and, you know, the other guy's like, well, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't know about this prop then. He's like, well, you didn't put the seal in right there. I'm like, oh, yeah, you didn't put the seal in. Not my problem. <laughs> Long story short, several months later, that engine developed another crack, and uh, he decided at that point it was best, his best option was to sue us for everything. And, uh, yeah, my boss said no. Who knows? He wanted a, he wanted a Jacobs all along. He didn't want the Continental. He wanted he said, just buy me new Jacobs. We'll call it even. Plus, I didn't do this to your engine, you know. But the, I, the actually what happened is, and it it was, it was in a different section. It was just a, there was a crack where a stud was. It wasn't a big deal where the thrust thrust nut goes. That would have been easily fixable. But what was not fixable is he sent out the governor to be overhauled, and. This particular governor has a very low pressure because of those rings. You can only go to like 100 and some PSI. They adjusted the governor pressure up to like 350, 500 PSI. And every one of those rings I saw, they were thin as a razor blade. You could hardly touch, they were so sharp you couldn't touch them. Ruined every single one of them. I'm like, oh, now you're done. Nice. Could you cry? All right, I shouldn't have said that, I told you that story. But a little bitter. It's the same story you told us? Mm -hmm. Did I tell it before? <laughs> Why did you stop me? Sorry, you told this story. Because nobody else here probably heard it. What was I telling that story about? <laughs> he didn't tell us. No. He, he didn't did. tell us. He watched it in the prop governor video. Yeah, before. it was in the video. Oh, okay. No, that's why I mean, last time you did this in 2020. Yes, I would normally tell the story, but I wouldn't go on about <laughs> the whiny guy. <laughs> Always he just went into more detail. Okay. Yeah. So that was good, right? I was like, oh. <laughs> All right. More information, uh, more backstory. More backstory. More lore. Like more lore. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. All right, basic operations. So let me see, aerodynamic. Aerodynamic twisting force. Twisting force normally causes a blade to go to, or causes a, causes a blade to go to what? Okay. Uh, I can write pitch sticks with fewer words. Higher low RPM. 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 Low RP
M. So aerodynamic crispness does that. While centrifugal, Causes blade to go to low blade angle or high RPM. But by installing counterweights, on brackets attached to the control mechanism on brackets attached to control mechanism I'll put this or prop now it's applicable to everything centrifugal force can now be used to drive prop to high pitch. Low RPM. Yep, can't change that. Let's change the aerofoil. So it just assists, but it's such a small thing that I don't know. So remember, when you see counterweights, that means, I wrote that usually means, but that means, that means centrifugal. Twisting force equals high pitch. All right, this becomes important when we. Want me to wait? You can be okay. Turn the fan on. <laughs> this becomes important as we talk about singles and, and twin engine aircraft. Right, so on a single engine aircraft, if I lose oil pressure, my prop is gonna go to, towards high pitch, towards high pitch. So it takes oil pressure to make it go high pitch. So all on itself, flying around, single engine airplane, you have the blue knob in, high RPM, low pitch, you pretty much drained off the oil and the propeller is gonna flatten out and go towards low pitch. That's its natural state of rest, I guess, if you will, while the engine is spinning. All right, and then to go into a higher pitch on a, on a constant speed, you're gonna pull back on the blue knob. It's gonna drive oil pressure in there, which is gonna go into a piston, which is gonna drive it towards a high blade angle. All right, I lose oil pressure, it's gonna flatten out. Now, if we have a twin, we can't have that. So if we have a twin and we lose oil pressure, we got to shut that engine down. And you're going to want it. And the last thing you want is like, okay, I got to shut it down. I need to feather it. I need oil pressure, except I just had a dynamic disassembly. I lost all my oil pressure. The oil <coughs> pump's gone. Cylinder's gone. I can't get the oil pressure to bring this prop into feather. Now that's just going to try and windmill against an engine that's dead or dying or, you know, coming apart. So you want it to be the opposite. So it's going to default to centrifugal force and oil pressure is going to bring it back to flat. So that's why twins are always backwards. Not always, most of the time. Unless you're making it. Huh? Yes. <laughs> Fun fact, it was actually invented by Alexander Hamilton. When was he president? Anyone know? Huh? What? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Huh? 30 or 40 area. 30 or 40, I don't remember which, because it was... 1930, 1940s? Wait, what? No, no, no. FDR, man. 
Yeah. You distracted me and then I lost all this. He was very young when he did. I didn't vote for the guy, but. <laughs> Seventeen. So yeah, that's about the time that this prop was invented. So you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, okay. C. C, Senor. Engine oil. It does. All right, so her thing was, I thought that, <clears throat> yes, so that is one of the, the difficulties in twin engines is you have to identify which engine failed. And, well, now you got me thinking. I already told all these stories. Um, so, let's say lesson number one, you know, like what happened to Steve in his little incident over there. Like I said, you will notice all of the pilots have their mouth shut and they're saying nothing because we're like, mm -hmm, I'm glad it didn't happen to me because it probably will someday. So I went to uh, citation school in uh, Dallas and it, it was pretty cool because we actually go into the simulator and let me tell you, those simulators, they are the real deal. I mean, it is to the point where we're talking maintenance and we're talking about how to, re I don't remember now, is how to release something. You reach up under the panel and you could release this thing. The guy's like, it's in the simulator. You can reach up and I mean, it's all, it's the panel. It is everything. I mean, down to every, you know, what behind it is real because it's an act it's not like one of these simulators where you reconfigure it. Oh, do you want it to be a, you know, King Air? Do you want it to be a citation? Do you want it to be a 747? No, this was just a citation. And so we are going through all these procedures about uh, emergency procedures, startup procedures. It was kind of cool because you had to actually put your finger on exactly what was happening. And it happened so fast, but you had to do it all. And then um, so the guy says, OK, you know, now we're going to go through emergency drills. You know, what happens if you start light off an engine and you have have a fire or something like that? So great. I'm like the fourth guy to go. Right. And I had memorized the procedures. It's not like they were going to, you know, I'm, I know what to do. And so, you know, the first guy does it and you know, he just botches it. You know, it's like wrong this, wrong that. I'm like, ah, you know. And so, you know, it's eventually my turn and nobody's really done it right. And I'm like, all right, I am now sitting there. I know what's going to happen. I have prepared for it. Again, I know exactly what he's going to do in the next few seconds. He's already told me, Kevin, I am going to give you a fire in one of the engines. Great. I have zero risk. Nothing's going to happen to me. I'm in a simulator. He does a fire thing. I go through the procedure, and he says, Kevin, that was absolutely perfect textbook. Too bad you shut down the wrong engine. <laughs> That's how easy it is. So... Um, yes, that is, uh, I, I don't have a twin rating, but yeah, that's my understanding. That is one of the biggest problems is identifying the right engine. One of the barons I worked on actually had an indicator. It had pitot tubes under each engine. They were thrust indicators. And so if you lost thrust, you, the prop wouldn't be thrusting and it would actually give you an indicator. It's that engine. It's that engine. So yes, once you, you do it. And, you know, you listen to these podcasts and stuff. Sometimes people get into a situation where the plane will yaw. You're like, whoa, this one's going forward. This one's coming back. That's the bad engine. Shut it down. I've listened to one. It's something like this one was running away. It's like the governor had failed and the prop was, you know, doing something stupid. And so they shut that one down. Or, yeah, it was something weird. I forget what it was. But anyway, they shut down one they shouldn't have. Yeah, this is the good one just to shut it down because it's dragging. Yeah. How long for a twin engine if one's on fire before you'll actually see the smoke out of your left or right? Like in a real situation as well. Well, the citation, you'll never see it. Engines are way back. They're way behind you. Yeah. And a piston engine, they're usually right there and right yeah. there. But it depends on what the fire is. Yeah. Could be a while. You never know. All right. So, yes, it'll continue to windmill. And that's what we're talking about. That's why we want it to feather. That windmill is drag. 
it's even worse if the engine is eating itself apart. You want to stop that. You know, think about an engine that's already lost a cylinder and crankshafts and stuff are still going around and con rods are bouncing back and forth. You want to shut that down. So you got to feather it. It's the only way you're going to do it. I shouldn't say it's the only way you're going to do it. I actually didn't realize this. I was watching some video. Some people in a, will actually stall the airplane to get the prop to stop moving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So on top of losing an engine, now you're going to go stall it. So, yeah. yeah. Is there no fire detection systems? In small airplanes? I'm just wondering if they couldn't have any installed. Mm -hmm. You're talking weight, expense. Remember a few weeks ago when I said that a mixture was an option for some of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I'm just saying, like, you know, a twin engine, I'm just saying, I mean, how much... How much more would it cost to have something like that? Put it's in. always, you know, how much more to this? Then how much? Okay, now you got safety, you know, it's like. You got to find value. Well, why, why do you need a fire detection in a twin? Down. Especially if it's like the 310 out there. Well, I don't know. You're, you're making it seem like you're. See right there? You see right, the engine's right there and it's right there. You can see both of them. Well, yeah, but you just said you couldn't see them in the. Oh, citation? Like the citation. Yeah, citation. Oh, they have fire detection in bottles. Oh. Then why dress up? <laughs> because of the stress. <laughs> this is the stress of. You know, fire, fire, and you, you're doing it. It was like, no, it's a fire on the right, and I showed down the left. Oh, yeah, citations absolutely have fire bottles, detection, the whole works. Oh, okay, yeah, because he's like, you know, when he was asking about it, and you're saying you can't see it because they're back there, he's like asking, when do you know if it's on fire? Oh, and it's like, yeah, when the fire light goes off. Oh, yeah. so there's a fire detection system. I went back to thinking about twins and barons and, you know, the barons and stuff, piston engines. No, turbines, definitely. Yeah, definitely have it. Okay, so uh, where am I here? Engine oil. Engine oil. Engine oil. Pressure. Wow, look at that. And your race. What's it supposed to be? That was a race. Your race. That's 2.8. Engine oil pressure, probably. Engine oil pressure. Pressure is used to overcome... Uh, centrifugal force. It's actually twisting force. Centrifugal twisting force, which will henceforth be known as CTF, centrifugal twisting force. Save time. See you world. Um, and drive blades and drive blades to low pitch. And by the way, you gotta, you know, you have to be thinking while I'm doing this because going back and forth, low pitch, high pitch, high pitch, low pitch, it's really easy to say it backwards and then you'll be confused. So if something doesn't sound right, let me know. You know me and my liquid lunches. Yeah. Operates a control valve. Operates a control valve that has two options. What are those two options? High pitch, low pitch. Okay, send. Yep, send oil to prop, which is going to be. Low pitch. Low pitch. <laughs> low pitch. Oil and. Yep. Yeah. Or. B, drain oil. <laughs> equals high pitch. You good? I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> you guys like Joe Dirt, the movie Joe Dirt? Yeah. <laughs> you kind of have a Joe Dirt kind of a. There you go. It's got dirt in It looks more like Hit Rock. Def Leppard sucks. When, uh, when I don't have this, though, people say I don't think the Clemson quarterback. Who? The Clemson quarterback. Who's that? For football. Clemson Browns. 
Yeah, I'm not familiar. <laughs> Apparently that's not a thing to look like. Okay, I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Uh, low pitch, take off position, pilot moves lever forward to high position. So pilot moves lever forward. That that makes you happy, you know. I'm, uh, I, would, I don't want you know. I don't want you going on rate.myprofessor.com and complaining or something. Pilot moves lever forward to uh, to high RPM. <laughs> high RPM. Um, control valve. I think we're being a little redundant here. The control valve. Directs oil to prop. Oh, directs oil to prop. Um, this overcomes the centrifugal twisting force and drives prop to low pitch. Slash high RPM. And that's oil to the rear. To the dome. Uh, no, there's no rear and front. It's just the. To the dome. Just the. the dome. Are you starting? Are you talking about? You've been reading about the Hamilton standard? Just. I just read a little bit. Huh? Just, just by background. Yeah, because Hamilton has forward back. The, that's the only one that does it. This one is just the space. Okay. So it's only one space. It just gets bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller. Uh, all right, so the opposite again, high pitch cruise. Slash cruise. Um, pilot moves lever back to lower RPM. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. So, you know, the pilot, I have it here, pilot lose lever forward, move it back. I mean, how do I know that that's forward and back? I mean, it'd work either which way, right? Forward, back. Yeah, but why? More forward, is forward more faster, RPM, more power. Faster, forward back. is always more. Yeah, fireball. Yeah, fireball. Just like uh, balls just like to the switches. wall. Just like switches, on, off. Yes. So forward is. Forward is on, back is off, up is on. So remember that. So everything forward is more, back is less. Balls to the wall. Because I'm still asking some of you guys these questions, like, well, which way is um, mixture rich? Can I get back to you on that? No, don't get back to me on that. Which way is mixture rich? Forward. 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 Back is lean. Which way is high RPM? Forward. Forward. Low RPM. Blue back. Blue back. Okay. And I told you, balls to the wall, that's a, actual, it's a term. Because you guys, they have little balls on the end of the things. And so, put them to the wall, you go fast. Uh, control valve. Control valve. Drains. Drains off oil from prop. Drains off oil from prop. And centrifugal twisting force moves blades to, see, I almost did it. Wait, control the chains off on the centrifugal force moves blades to, oh yeah, to high pitch. Low RPM. Shut down. Okay. 
So normally, you want your blade angle to be as flat as possible for starting. You wouldn't really think it makes that much of a difference. But if when you guys, whoever gets done with your projects first, we'll figure out which airplane we're going to run, either the 310 or the Skymaster, or if we can get the Bonanza out. But we'll pick one of those, and we'll actually run that. And, uh, oh, I can... It's... Uh, Sometimes I'll put the blades into to feather and show you, and boy, is it a bear to get started. Uh, I don't like doing it unless I got the other engine running to give me it's enough power. Like starting the car in first gear. Kind of is. Yeah, it's it's. It's harder, right? third gear. It doesn't want to spin, and then but it, it, the noise that it makes as it goes is is kind of funny because it's you can really hear those pitch changes in the blades the way it hits the air. And so you hear it, and if you're in the airplane, you feel it. It's just shaking, and it doesn't want to go, and manifold pressure is really high, and pretty soon just it starts to smooth out, and the RPM starts coming up, and you can hear the prop come into a low pitch, and like, ah, oh, there it is. That's so. what it's like starting it in the air. When it's coming out of feather, it doesn't have the, the accumulator. Okay. Because it's flat. Yeah. And it's bad. <laughs> Do you have a twin rating? Yeah. Okay. What, what are you flying? Uh, the, the 310 at Auburn. Oh, wow. Okay. Now the Technam as of a week ago. A what? A Technam. It's an Italian twin. Wow. It's not as fancy. Yeah. No, it has Rotax 12 inches. Uh, really? With, with feathering props? Yeah. Interesting. And dual And what? And dual carbs. And dual carbs. Well, it'd be quad carbs now, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two for each engine. Do you know there is actually, I want to say it was Aronka built a twin engine aircraft and it had O200s, which are fixed pitch props. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a little scary. Yeah, well, it was built to be a super lightweight, um, economical trainer, but you can't really shut down one engine. So, uh, Shut down, place prop into high pitch. High pitch, uh, one, forces oil, 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 out of cylinder, and two, um, to cover more of the piston with cylinder, to cover piston um, with cylinder. And that's just for corrosion protection, protect more of that, that prop. I don't really know if this is point four at this point, but system components. Yep. Well, what do you know? Did something right. Spider. Where? Where? Right there. Spider. Spider. That's called the spider. It's the central component. You can see the splines inside there where the hub. where it goes over the shaft, hub goes over the shaft, and the blades would then rest over there. Um, how many blades are these each? Looks like three. Three, you'd be right. Well, you can't stock, stack What'd bacon? you guys eat for dinner, man? <laughs> Tacos? Tacos? Is it Taco, Taco Bell? Bell? Huh? All right, here's some of the components. Like I said, you have that cap goes over the cylinder. This right here has got a nut on it, so this whole thing screws down onto the shaft. Yeah, there's a lot of seals in there, so I don't like messing with them. Um, if we have time, there's kind of a cool video that we'll watch. But anyway, that's, I'll need you for the test to memorize all these things. You're like, nope. <laughs> Um, yeah, not important. We kind of looked at all that. Welsh plug. Welsh bolt, I should say. We have the spider. Yeah. 
Talked about the spider. Well, we've got the blades, which you've already talked quite a bit about blades. The spider is the central component. Then we got the blades, eight, nine, ten. Usually aluminum, but some of the early models were apparently wood. I've never seen that. We have the counterweight assembly. Uh, we got the hub assembly. Let's see, counterweight assembly attached to the, well, usually to the butt end of the blade. Uh, it's hub assembly, two steel halves that are match set. Contains the bearing spacers and the surrounds the spider. Have the cylinder and piston assembly. You did what in your assembly? Uh, it works. Piston threads through the cylinder onto the crankshaft and actually holds the prop onto the engine. Then the cylinder is sealed around the piston. The cylinder slides along the stationary piston. Yep. The cylinder goes back and forth on the piston. So unlike an engine where the piston goes inside the cylinder is moving, now the piston stays put and that holds the prop on and the cylinder goes over it. Yeah. Um, oh, this is my favorite thing. Um, once the piston is secured, the cylinder is capped, creating an oil tight seal. Piston torque! Applying a, quote, applying a force of 180 pounds at the end of a four-foot bar. Oh, no. While applying the force, strike the bar close to the wrench with a hammer weighing about two and one-half pounds. Wow. How hard? Wait, why? Why are they like this? Why is it with people that make props or have to do with props that just want to make arbitrary shit. All right, Welsh bolts. Yeah, they try this many times. 190, too much, too much. <laughs> Got it down to 180, and then it was like, well, how about three, you know, what size hammer, so. Um. You can't convince me it's not just a bunch of drunk guys at the hangar working up. Hollow it, bolt that allows, is that the right hollow? Yes, hollow. Right. It's not the, like, hollow be thy name. Um, allows a mechanic to fill the void with lead wool for balancing. Oops. Where do you get lead wool? From, from, from a lead sheet. sheet. Where do you get virgin wool? <laughs> Ugly sheet. <laughs> <laughs> takes a Welch plug. I know it's break time. Let me finish this one. Um, in head, uh, Welch plug in head to seal the bolt. That's right, Welch plug. Go back to the picture. It's just a bolt with the hollowness in it. See, you put the lead wool down in there. Makes it heavy. And that's how you balance the prop. Oh. Um, let's see. There are some terms. So you know what they are. Dry balance. What do you think that is? dry. Yep, you don't want them wet. Balanced without grease. Therefore, wet balance is balanced with grease. And I have this note on movable props on, on all. Any sort of prop that has a movement that takes grease, uh, on all movable props. Make sure you are very careful with grease. 
shit out of me. So all the Zergs pop out. Well, unfortunately, what happens... Now I have these points. Do not overfill. Um, fill evenly. And, oops, that was B, C. Use the correct grease. As Zach was saying, one grease cancels the other one out. They eat each other oh, up. Oh, yeah, 23, I want to say it's 238, 37. It's not important. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, the point was important. They eat, they eat each other. Some greases aren't compatible. You can, uh, so, all right. Best case scenario for you, you accidentally overfill a prop with grease. That's not a problem because all you have to do is take it apart and clean out the grease. But who has to take it apart? You. Uh-uh. Certified repair station. So now you got to pull the grease off and the airplane's down. Oh, sorry. Pull the prop off. The airplane is now grounded. You have to then call the prop shop and they have a truck that comes around and picks up because props are actually very difficult to move, especially three blade. They're very large. They don't fit in regular cars. So have you guys seen the prop shop truck driving around? It's just a regular pickup with a flatbed, but you'll see a three blade sitting on a, you know, at a significant angle because it's the only way it's going to fit. It doesn't fit laying down flat on a lot of them. So you take it down to the prop shop and they open it up because you call them up. And, and a lot of owners with, with props do this. They will just send them in for a, a clean and reseal, not an overhaul. And, it's a, and the reason why is because if you do that in periodic intervals, it's cheaper than an overhaul. And what they're doing is taking it out, cleaning the grease, inspecting for anything. They can stop any corrosion while it's still very light, put it back together, save you a lot of money. So uh, clean and reseal. So you send it out for a clean and reseal. Uh, we got bad news for you. We opened it up for that clean and reseal and you got a couple of really corroded parts. You got to replace it. In fact, uh, by the time we get done replacing those parts, plus the mandatory replacement parts, plus the seal, plus the labor, honestly, you're looking at really be cheaper to get a new prop. Mm. And that's because you put too much grease in it. So you got to call the owner and say, I accidentally overfilled your prop. You need a new one. What? <laughs> How do we go from accidentally overfilled to needing a new one? Well, you see, you know, so that's what happens. Don't, don't let that happen. Well, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. If an idiot would do that, don't, don't do, do that. that.